Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, and in this lesson we'll be doing part two of our lesson in profile machining. We'll continue our next operation to complete these corners here that were not machined by the previous tool because the previous tool is too big for that particular operation. So we'll start in this operation itself. I'll go back here and just to show you what we had done here in our previous operation to remind you, you'll see that the tool was not able to get into the corner. So what I'll do now is from within this operation I'll click on save and copy creating another operation, a new operation that is an exact copy of the old operation and all I have to do now is make some changes. For example, geometry I do not have to change because I'm using the same geometry. The tool, I want to use a smaller tool and I'll create a new tool that is of a diameter of 8 millimeters and I'll select that tool. My levels, I'll keep that the same as before and in my technology area I'll go now and use the option of rest material chamfer. If I go into this option, I'll choose the option of rest. Now I have to go into my data area. Now in the data area, we have milling type. That's the first thing we have here. Milling type tells us whether we want to work on separate areas, which is in our case, or around the profile. Around the profile will work all the way around the profile but when it gets into certain corners where it couldn't go it'll work slower. I'm going to use first the option of separate areas. Now my previous tool diameter I can write in the value over here or I can go to my tool table by clicking on previous tool diameter and click on the tool that I used previously and that value will automatically be entered in here. Over here I can enter the previous wall offset which was 0.2 millimeters and now I have here my extension overlap. What that does is as follows. My tool after it does its lead in and lead out it wants to start exactly on the point where the previous tool was not able to go in. What this does actually says start a little bit before and end a little bit after that point. And I'll simply add on one millimeter to that value. I'll leave everything else the same as I had before working with a rough cut of 0.3 and in my links I'll also leave my arcs the same I'll just put it down to an arc value of two millimeters. I'll do save and calculate now when I go into my simulation I'd like to again use the option of 2D simulation, but this time I'd like to run it together with the previous operation simulation. Now, all I have to do is simply click on both of those operations over there, and I'll run one operation at a time. My first operation, as you see, could not finish the corner. Now, my second operation, and I'll do this one step at a time, you'll see the tool is going in and finishing only that area where the previous tool could not go in as shown here. And so do the same on every single one of those corners. Something else we can do with our technology area with our rest machining is as follows. The amount of material I'm actually taking off in this corner over here is actually not really all that much. So what I can do is as follows. I can decide to do a finish cut with that smaller tool around the entire part but all I want is that when it reaches those areas to maybe go a little slower. So in my rest material area and my data I'll choose the option of a round profile. Now again I put in the previous tool diameter but what that does is as follows where the tool 16 millimeters was not able to machine when this new tool walks comes in I want you to use a, the feed that's written 
in this area over here, being slower by default by half of the previous feed. I'll simply say OK. I'll choose Finish Now instead of Rough. And in my Finish area, I have the number of passes, how many times I want to go around. And as I said in my previous lesson, the extension, overlap, and maximum step down of the part. The maximum step down I'll have as every four millimeters and I'll leave my links the exact same way they were before. And simply do save and calculate. Now when I do my simulation we'll take a look again using the 2D operate, uh, simulation and let's take a quick look also at our feeds as we're going around. And I'll do this one step at a time. Right now my, t my feed is going down towards the part and now it's starting its profile feed of 100. Now as I get towards the corner you'll see now it drops down to the slower feed until it leaves that area and now goes back to the 100. And the same thing is done for every one of those corners as we go around the part itself. This concludes part two of our lesson on profiles. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.